everybody. Welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott. I'm joined by Josh. Oh, hello. Happy, happy, happy New Easter. I yes, guess. the day after, the two days after chocolate was eaten, many yeah. merriments were had. Um, it seems like a pretty good thing's on the horizon. Another massive publisher has gone, hey, you know what? Microtransactions are crap. Oh, another microtransaction win. Yes, and it Excellent. seems like uh, after following you know, EA and Battlefront and the way that they've been reapproaching Battlefront 2, now Warner Brothers and Monolith have put a statement out saying that Shadow of War is going to have all of its microtransactions and gold and vendors and marketplace stuff just gutted. Um, they did I a very... This. Yeah, they did a very frank um, statement on how much it kind of ruins the progression of the game and how they're looking to change that. That's great. Yeah. So WB has been one of like the sneakiest, most insidious uh, publishers <laughs> when it comes to this. Like they're they're not the ones that take the most flack, no. but they've been doing it sort of under the radar for a long time. And I think Shadow of War was the first time they took like a real backlash for it. It's, yeah. It's nice to see them, you know, uh, acknowledge the controversy. Maybe six months too late, but it's nice <laughs> to see them finally, you know, do something. True. I mean, uh, that's the thing. Warner Brothers. Of, like you said, of sneakily sort of put microtransaction systems in a bunch of different stuff. I mean, like even Mortal Kombat had them in. Like yeah. you could pay for fatalities, and it was like, oh god, like oh my god, I hate that. Yeah, and it wasn't something that you could tell NetherRealm didn't want it in there. Yeah. But Warner Brothers is just this overarching corporate overlord, just being like, put the just you know. I used to love the crypt and they monetize it, Scott. You have to <laughs> Don't pay for it. Pay for a character skin. God damn it. So whatever. So um, yeah, I mean, we both played Shadow of War through. I got all the way through it, and like, it, I liked it enough. But it was it, you could tell it was severely hampered by yes. this forced sort of, you know, like extrapolative weird oh, thing that was just pillaging all the systems. Well, the thing is, I didn't think it was intrusive. It just Words. took away from you know what I loved about Shadow yes. of War. Like it just made it redundant. I made the Nemesis <laughs> system redundant, and that was the best thing. And so, it seems like they've acknowledged it. Yeah, so that's the crux of their apology is that they said that their biggest selling point was the Nemesis system, and that by having the idea of purchasing better orcs in the game fundamentally took away from the sort of stories that players would make with, you know, they had because basically the whole game, if you haven't played much of Shadow of War, is that, you know, you're playing as this dude called Talion, and there are all these different orcs all about the place. There are certain more like higher level ones, and yes. they all have different personalities, and there's all these different ways to interact with them and recruit them and pit them against each other and within that are all sorts of really cool dynamic interactions or different things that you want to see um, and different ways to trigger their weaknesses and fight them and that kind of stuff but you can jump through that progression you can you know just leapfrog over the idea that you're supposed to build an army by just bu buying better orcs buying an army yeah exactly and so they said that that fundamentally took away from what they wanted the game to be about it took them way too long <laughs> to put this out um, because that was always the thing and you can check the review for this too um, the best thing about Shadow of War was that it was yes. coming across an orc and him him being like, you killed me like you know, 10 battles ago and now I've got a new eye and I'm going to take you out. And then you can be like, well, actually, I've got a guy made of bees and he's, yeah. you know, I didn't realize you were afraid of bees and now he's <laughs> going to kill you. And that stuff was great. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't see myself going back to Shadow of War personally. No, probably not. But... <laughs> it's a bit too little too late for this. And I said to you, I've got like a very like cynical approach to this where um, I think, I honestly think that they left the microtransactions in, they weathered the storm because the game had this, you know, massive surge of popularity back when it came out. It was at the top of the charts back in the day or back when it first came out. Um, and now it's on all sorts of Easter selling lists or it right. will be across the summer. And I think they've gone like, well, we've maximized our profits based on the launch window and it doesn't make sense to keep this stuff in. I mean, they're not Konami. Whereas with Warner Brothers, I think they've sort of looked at the market and they've looked at the backlash and you know they've thought about EA and Battlefront and gone like you know what it, it makes financial sense for us to yes. take this out and do the whole for the players thing um, but I don't personally buy it that much although it will have a tangible effect on games. I think it will have a tangible effect on people you know jumping into it who yes. didn't pick it up at launch but what does this do for the people who have been pumping money into this economy? Well, you were saying that because you were like, because yeah. at launch there were all these different uh, tiers. You get the like gold edition or the deluxe one. As always, there's a one of those versions that um, gives you a leg up and gives you access to these orc crates and things like that. And they had a whole bunch of different promotional deals that would get yeah. you uh, these like specialist orcs. Which again, it all folds back into kind of breaking the progression of it. How much? If you say you absolutely love Shadow of War and you've put so many hours into building your army and amassing all these funds through a mix of microtransactions and game time. Um, removing one half of that, does that fundamentally mean that your time invested was worth nothing? Yeah. Or worth a lot less than it could have been if you just played it all the way through? Because, I mean, the microtransactions and the buying the orcs wasn't intrusive in the main campaign, but the no. end game was all about keeping that army stocked and, you know, defending against, defending your little forts and stuff. And yeah. you needed more or less to, like, buy things to keep those stocked up. So that was losing. the thing. That was the biggest, most contentious point, especially at launch, was that once you get past the story, you get into this thing called Shadow Wars, which is a never-ending version of the, the main game. Like, you're a 
mountain fortresses and stocking them with orcs, and you're going up against other fortresses. It's like San Andreas, like GTA's gang wars, where like you'll right. be over here and this one's undefended, so that one gets taken over, and you go over there, then that one gets undefended. And it was a way to just, you know, mean that you could live in this world of dynamic interactions for as long as you want. And there were a lot of like positives to that in terms of the AI and the character design, uh, the uh, Nemesis design, Nemesis system design. Um, but it got very tired over time because it was just grinding. Yeah. And the easily, the again, cynical, the go-to for that was, well, they want you to pay money to buy the orcs to get through the mode. Um, and that's the thing that they've, they're they doing one of the biggest upgrades to now is they're going to add more narrative elements um, to the mm. Shadow Wars thing. So I guess that'll give you more of a reason to play through it. Even though Shadow Wars story, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, not great. it's not the best. Not great. Kind of just ruining his Zelda, just just putting him in, <laughs> just making him a ring wraith, just doing, just doing whatever you want. That's all he does. That is all he does. Oh, you think that'll be like substantial or will it just be more contextual reasons to, you know, buy into the I would system? hazard a guess it'll be more contextual mm. things. I mean, yeah. it's there's no other Lord of the Rings games on the market. As they, you know, there used to be this, this whole surge of Lord of the Rings games across the 2000s. The tie-in games, man. They, well, they exactly, were so like, good. 2000 Return of the King all the way. Yeah. But like across the 2000s, obviously because the movies were so good, there was this big surge in popularity. The Hobbit movies, not so good. <laughs> and so you've not seen this, you know, there's not been any more tie-in games or just the Lord of the Rings mythos isn't mined anywhere near as much as it used to yeah. be. And this is the only thing on the market. So um, with the Lord of the Rings TV show coming out and with, um, you know, with the general sort of idea being that there's no competition, they want to do this thing that, that frame Shadow War in a more interesting, or sorry, more palatable, more playable kind of light. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's good. That That's good for newcomers, but it's in a way fundamentally terrible for anyone who's put time into it in the yeah. past. Well, this is the thing. So uh, the, the ability to purchase gold is going away from yes. May the 8th, right. but the actual market and the system, the loot boxes aren't going until July 17th. Okay. Which I guess is to sort of, you know, allow people who have pumped in money for it to you know spend their gold do not feel instantly ripped off they right. can like continue to spend for a couple more months mm-hmm. that's that's that still seems like a big f you to me <laughs> you know what I mean? like these people because there's not we, we were checking the steam the steam stats earlier yes. on and there aren't too many people playing shadow war at least on steam no that's not you know indicative of the whole population no but there were a thousand there are people, people last 24 hours yeah there are people playing there mm-hmm. are people still buying things and to have that cut off it's like in, I mean, because they want new players, it's 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 a bit. Well, that's my thing. I think I think they're targeting the the budget sale, the summer sales, that yeah. kind of thing. Uh, and it, like I said, it's really good for newcomers. But it's one of those problems that a lot of developers are going to come to, where they design these systems that are designed to take advantage of of a launch day surge in popularity, and designed to take advantage of people that have huge amounts of disposable cash. And once those people have invested time in offsetting the game's economy or offsetting the you know the general sort of progression of that game to to be weighted towards people that have that cash. How do you then change your game to, yeah. to factor into the people that are waiting for a budget release? And you're going to see lots of different developers trying to do that sort of thing. And obviously EA's approach at Battlefront was to you know answer fans' complaints right. and try and put a cosmetic store in. Um, and this is another thing. This is a way of them pivoting what Shadow of War is and trying to make it more palatable. So, yeah. Again, like between uh, Star Wars and now this, it mm-hmm. seems like a huge win for getting rid of microtransactions in the wrong so. run. But at the same time, it's also a big indicator that I don't want to buy these games day one anymore. If they're going to change this much yeah. in like the space of six months, why do I want to jump in, put all my effort into like the mm-hmm. systems that are there, only for them to potentially be moved, removed, or changed <laughs> within the space of a, less than a year? Very true, and uh, and that's that's one of the biggest problems is like they're gambling with that. I mean, like every time you change a game on this level, when it's this public. Um, and it's this much of a talking point. Like, yeah, you fundamentally change the appeal of that game. And they're banking on that launch day sales surge yeah. to you know, to tie in with all their microtransaction systems or the general systems that they have in place to make more money, um, deluxe editions or DLC or tie-in sponsorships and things like that. All that goes away if the majority of people go, wait a minute, so if I just wait, it's a better version months later, which yeah. it always is. Yeah. And we've always been up against that with um, patches and bug fixes. Fundamentally, games get better over time. Definitely. That's smell gets all the five and they put all the microtransactions in. But the vast majority of stuff does improve over time, and they're just proving it. So, like it's you know, and the industry at large wants to rally against um, you know the idea of uh, trade-ins and second-hand stuff. They want pre-orders. They want that initial surge. Yeah. But this is a huge reason to wait. Yeah, it's a huge reason to wait because I mean, you want to trust these publishers more now that they're mm-hmm. making changes. But whilst I might trust them to not completely screw me over with microtransactions in the future, I don't want to buy into their games just in case things will change. How do I buy their launch day promises if they're going to change so substantially? Well, fundamentally, you can't. Yeah. And and that's the thing. And and part of their apology. Um, um, other part of their statement, sorry, I'm reading it as an apology, is uh, is them saying that even the idea of this overarching microtransaction system cheapens the feel of progression. Yes. I'm paraphrasing, but you can read that. We'll stick it up on the screen. Um, they're fundamentally saying that even the idea of these wider systems ruins or affects the main 
progression, the main through line of the game. And that was what everyone was saying back at launch. Um, and it's good that they're admitting it, but I, I can't get away from the fact that I think they're only admitting it because they need to tap into this emerging, right. you know, the fact that Shadow of War is not a brand new product anymore. We've rarely seen um, like a developer admit that microtransactions actually impact the experience because mm. the spiel we always get is that it's an extra option you can do if you want. <laughs> development but, costs. Yeah, development costs. But for a developer to come straight in and be like, no, this has affected the core gameplay, that mm. this has affected why people like this series to start with, that's a positive to me. I like that. It is, uh, yes. I mean, fundamentally, yes, it is. This is uh, Shadow of War is going to be a better game or a more, um, pa- I keep using the word palatable because it is just, it's more playable, it's yeah. more palatable, it's more like you can get on board with a game that isn't trying to sell you something every 10 seconds. Um, and that is a, is a more, it gets into a whole miasma of like, you know, morals and the philosophy of games and why we play and all that kind of crap and the economy of games, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's more approachable. Fundamentally, Shadow yeah. of War is a better game. Um, but I, I hazard again. I, I don't know. You guys can let us know what you think in the comments, whether or not you're actually going to be going back to Shadow of War or whether you were holding off, whether the idea of microtransactions and the economy made people hold off and did it make you hold off? Um, and if that's something that you've been waiting on to go and give it a shot. Um, for me, I don't see myself going back to it. I haven't even gone back to Battlefront 2 yet. Um, oh, me neither. So exactly. it's yeah. like, for me, it's too little too late. If you want to make the best impression, then your game should be as approachable and rewarding and, and enjoyable and fun or whatever as possible on day one. Yeah. It shouldn't be, like you said, months later where something is different. Either way, you guys can let us know what you think down in the comments. Do you see yourself returning to Shadow of War or is this too little too late? I've been Scott from whatculture.com. I've been Josh from whatculture.com. And we'll catch you guys soon. Bye. Bye.